Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show, live entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series. Hope you guys are doing well today. Thanks for joining us from all around the world. This is our celebrity uh, entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we started to sort of bring us all together and celebrate great people, celebrate all of you watching from around the world as well. We have an incredible audience of people, millions of people who watch from literally all across the globe. We welcome everybody watching here in the United States. We're in the New York area. That's where this show, the home base is here in the New York area along the Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. And uh, we're here in the United States. So we welcome everybody here in America. We welcome everybody watching in Canada, as well as in Mexico, all throughout South America, too. We have a lot of viewers that watch in Argentina and Brazil and throughout South America. We welcome all of our friends, our lovely viewers who are watching right now in Europe. Uh, throughout Europe, we hear from Switzerland and Germany and Italy and Finland and Sweden and Ireland and England and Scotland and Spain and Portugal, you name it, France, of course, and also everybody watching in Africa, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. It's good to have you with us, no matter what time of day it is, morning, noon, or night. We're always here to uh, have great conversations, phenomenal entertainment, and bring it back the lost art of conversation with all of you. If you'd like to comment while the show is on, our Jameis Lovety Hall chat room is open and available. You subscribe to that YouTube channel. You can comment while the show is on. We might even sprinkle a comment or two right below us here on the bottom of the screen. And uh, we thank you for doing that. And Again, don't forget you can binge watch hundreds of episodes of this series, something like 900 episodes or so on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Great to see everybody. Thanks for all the comments that are building up in our lovely whole chat room. We absolutely love it, that. And it's so cool to see everybody here. And we'll take a look at those in just a moment. First, I've got an incredible guest who's joining us from Los Angeles. Yes, from Hollywood, from California. Uh, you've seen him on just about everything. He's he's really brilliant at what he does. And you know, we were just talking about his extraordinary background, not just as an actor. He's a multi-winning actor. He is incredible. 11 Emmys. And for a multitude of different things, including acting, producing, and directing, we were talking, we we're sort of comparing notes being in the similar industries here about how great it is to be, you know, multi-talented and to wear many different hats in this industry. You may know uh, Christos Andros, our very special guest, uh, just as, you know, an actor, but he's a uh, Emmy winning producer and director as well. And Christos Andrews is uh, is going to be joining us in just a second from Los Angeles. So good to have you guys here. He's starring in, of course, and he's also worked on behind the scenes, the incredible Emmy winning series, The Bay. And everybody loves this series. Everybody talks about this series. And if you haven't seen it, you can definitely check it out. We'll tell you how you can see it and so much more. And uh, he is very, very popular in this series. All of the actors and actresses are. They've, they've really cast a great group of people that are in this series. And if you've not caught the series, you got to check it out. But, you know, Christos Andrews has been doing this for a long time. And uh, let me tell you just a little bit about his background. British American actor, producer, director, who is an 11 time Emmy winner. He's the only individual in history to receive Emmy wins for all three professions of acting, directing, and producing. He's also received the record 10 Emmy wins by the age of 30. He received Emmy Awards in 2016, 17, 18, 20, 21 for his work as the lead actor on that critically acclaimed crime drama that we're talking about. And um, of course, you guys have mentioned, even before we started this show, uh, you were mentioning that you're fans of the series of The Bay. And we love that. That's really, really cool. Well, he has received all these kinds of rewards for his participation in that series, lead actor. And he's won five more Emmys as an executive producer of the series back in 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 2020. In addition to winning an Emmy for his work as director 2016 since 2016 he also starred as tyler in the pop tv teen sitcom this just in and that's incredible he received an emmy nomination for his comedic work as an actor on that as well and uh, again he's been playing heartthrob pete garrett on the bay which debuted in september of 2010 and in addition to all of that 
Uh, he was the youngest producer ever nominated for an Emmy. And in 2017, became the first person ever to win the five by the age of 26. He's also played the lead role in the indie feature films, The South Side. Uh, as well. He received an Indie Series Award nomination for Best Lead Actor Drama for the role. He's also played the lead role in A Place Called Hollywood, a satire that tells the cutting-edge story of a young man who pursues his dream of becoming a famous actor and gives a glimpse of the harsher side of Hollywood. Again, he's really amazing in every role he takes on. He loves his craft and uh, he's awarded for it, too, by fans and by peers in the industry. His acting portfolio also includes the reoccurring role of Ronnie Riley on Nickelodeon's Super Sportlets as a lead band member of Miranda Cosgrove's TV band iCarly. You guys may remember that as well. And uh, Chris has also appeared in Craigslist Joe, the documentary and the foreign film Triangle, with appearances in several national commercials, including Wendy's and Best Buy. And if you don't think he's busy enough supplementing his acting career, he's also a model and he's appeared on national print billboards for Kohl's department stores, Vans, Zoo York and Hawk as well. And that is just the short list, folks. That is just the short list of the cool things. Um, his movies in the last 18 to 24 months include the Lion Gate film Survive the Game opposite Bruce Willis as one of the leads in the action movie Breakout, starring Brian Krause from Charmed, and uh, also Louis Mandalore from My Big Fat Greek Wedding, which is currently in post-production for the summer release in 2023, uh, and the 2022 limited theatrical release sci-fi thriller Battle for Pandora opposite the late time Sizemore, who we just lost just a couple of days ago. And one of my friends actually is a producer here on the East Coast, uh, was a dear friend of Tom's as well and worked with him on several projects. Big loss there. Um, also completed the film noir and you click Darkness of Man opposite Jean-Claude Van Damme. Kind of cool, huh? All this coming up as well. He's also played the lead in the dark comedy on Apple TV called Murder Anyone, one of the highest rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes this year uh, from the same director of Survive the Game as well. Uh, Christos is also an X Games champion and two-time Guinness record holder for his skateboarding as well. Born in California and a dual citizen, thanks to his mom who was born in England, he spent his summers in the UK. His sister, Celeste, Theana also stars on the Bay as Tamara Garrett. That's just the short list, folks, huh? <laughs> and you thought I was busy. Uh, he loves what he does. And again, he's joining us. This is really cool. It's not green screen, just so you know. Behind him, he's actually outside in front of his uh, his home in California. We're going to welcome him to the show. And uh, the landscapers just uh, stopped by to start mowing the lawn they must have realized that he was on the Jim Master show, so the lawnmowers stopped. See the power that we have? We stopped lawnmowers. Let's welcome our very special, our illustrious guests for the first time. I'm sure not the last. Christos Andrews is joining us here from Los Angeles, California. Christos, thanks for joining us, my friend. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate you having me, man. Ah, the pleasure is all mine. And like I was telling everybody, that looks so cool. It looks like a movie set behind you. It's no green screen. It's the real deal, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I'm definitely, definitely happy about it. It's, I'm, I'm like starting to enjoy the weather slowly coming out. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have had crazy stuff in California, huh? Cold weather, rain, snow. It's, uh, it's nuts up uh, in California right now lately. Yeah. yeah, we were just speaking about it. We did a little tradesies with the East Coast, I think. I think you did. That's what happened. You know, I love the power that you have, too. Uh, the landscapers must have realized that you're a director because you just went and the lawnmowers stopped. <laughs> Start to direct life itself, you know. That's just like, you, stop, cut. Because <laughs> he, he was outside and that he was going to move inside his home, you know, so it would be quieter. And then they stopped and he's back out. How have you been? I mean, what I was telling uh, our audience and we welcome everybody watching around the world, you're busy and you've always been busy. 
how did it get started for you? Uh, what were some of the inspirations that got you started to want to initially even go into acting and performance and the entertainment world, Christos? Well, I uh, always was encouraged by my mom about doing something creative. Um, I, meanwhile, I was doing, you know, sports. I was growing up doing sports, competitive skateboarding. And that's uh, what my friends and I would do. And that's where we formed our camaraderie and I formed my initial identity and discipline to to make progress in some kind of field and that was a great time but uh yeah it's always been a undercurrent like a, a subconscious oh I gotta try that something creative uh my mom always mentioned it it was really awesome of her actually now thinking about it in retrospect it's it's definitely something that served me because I I'm grateful I could put my energy into something different to switch gears and, you know, give, give life another, uh, flavor completely. So yeah, it started with acting, uh, just by chance in this, in senior year of high school, I just, you know, had an elective open, a best friend of mine said they're doing fight club, the play let's mm. you get, you got to audition. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta try this. It would be great. Um, Lo and behold, I get the uh, role in Fight Club to play, and it was I always liked the movie, so that was really cool to be able to do that. It was a great time. Uh, it was fun working with everybody. Um, I enjoyed the team sport, uh, acting, and just doing a production together kind of a feeling. Um, and one thing just led to another. Uh, it's like it's no more that I chose it than life sort of presented opportunities to choose it uh and i just thought let me just put my best foot forward and let's see what happens next thing uh at my mom's art gallery a uh, friend walks in I, i'd been doing commercials and some like you know print modeling and and uh some music videos at the time miranda cosgrove and she's amazing but but like uh gregory walks in my mom's art gallery one day one thing leads to another my mom's publicist uh, introduces me to him and his publicist, whatever happens, uh, what happened next is we became friends. Mm. Uh, a tragedy actually happened in his life. And he said that this is uh, my family, my my cousin. I, I need someone who isn't just a cold call cast. Like, mm. And it, we had just got to this point where he trusted my work enough that he believed I could actually pull this off. And mm. that movie, it's called the South side. That's really where the course correction or the change of my whole life kind of happened where everything came to a head or my mom's encouragement to do something creative and try acting, whatever, go back to school later, that kind of thing. And then the chances happen where I met friends that really had faith in me and more than myself. And I just, I've always trusted myself to give it my all, give, give what I'm doing my best. Um, so it, this has just been an elaboration of me giving my best to each, you know, thing that would present itself and something I can honor, especially feels good. So that's kind of where it all changed at around age 20, sort of. It's cool, the sound effects behind you, because it does sound like you're on a movie set. Choppers <laughs> going by and chainsaws or whatever. It sounds like you... Yeah, chainsaws. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's okay. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> True. It part in my uh, sound design and my green screen and everything. It's that. amazing. Do you have somebody on the other side pressing the buttons for the sound effects? I mean, they're, they're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. It sounds rather realistic, right? All these different sounds. What's that now coming? A helicopter? <laughs> yeah. Like they, they really source the proper helicopter sounds. That's it. Only they got everything. You know what they're doing? They're all auditioning to hope to work with you. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> they're coming by in planes and landscape. They're, they're coming dressed as landscapers, however they can get to you <laughs> to audition to get into these uh, series with you. I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that. Um, that you know, help. right. Um, so are you still doing the sports and are you still very physically active with all that too, to keep yourself, you know, balanced and fit and steady and all? 
Yeah, I do my well. I uh, I kind of transitioned my my uh, need for physical activity to just going to the gym. Um, I do skate. Uh, I do I do here and there when I can like fit it in. It's really nice to be able to do that because I I'll always be a skater at heart. I always enjoy it, um, and it's nice to do something that's a workout that you don't really realize you're working out. Yeah, um, that's really really cool, but. Other than that, if I only have like 30 minutes to get physical, I make sure I keep that good habit daily and just work out each day. I'll lift heavier if I have less time, which isn't right. always the wisest thing to do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just do what it. It's definitely a good feeling to just you got to do something physical. You, even if you're just taking calls and walking around, that's yeah. nice. It has its way of. Uh, sort of balancing everything out all your uh your dna appreciates it i feel like the blood's flowing everything's yeah. all the, it's hitting all the capillaries your nutrients are spreading around your body you're just by yeah, just nah. moving around so i definitely try to move around and whether it's phone call gym both whatever definitely something i'll i'll always keep as a good habit has stunt work ever been something that you've been toying with or has been something you thought about over the years since you're so you've been so physical and you've done extreme sports and all kinds of things? Yeah, I appreciate the, that question. It, it's definitely something I do uh, enjoy. I I um, it's just kind of where I I guess. I was cast a couple of times based on like a look, you know, a physique or something like, which I'm very grateful, humbly, very grateful that they would uh, appreciate that about me. And then that kind of led into, all right, well, I guess I'm going to train a bit and uh, be ready to do some action if I need to. Sometimes things happen on the fly and you are like, you know, with the little, uh, little, not too much notice a week, maybe a few days, sometimes day of sometimes seen of if they just you know stunt coordinators doing something the stunt double on the other end's doing something like bruce willis's stunt double mm -hmm. uh he actually worked directly with me who was great um and he he just taught me some moves real quick i picked them up fast i feel like my hand-eye coordination was there with skateboarding competitively all that uh i uh i but i but just like having a good you know, stunt coordinators working with you, putting their, their all into it and having the patience to sort of spell it out. And then, and then you kind of take it and make it your own. It's really uh, something that I've enjoyed. Um, the team was really happy with what happened with that movie, Survive the Game with Bruce Willis, working with his stunt double, Stuart. He's awesome. Uh, and then I uh, just did a movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme and a lot of, a lot of kind of crazy stunts going on in there, of course. And I really respect his work. Um, I'm grateful to, I haven't done like huge elaborate crazy scenes yet, but I've done like my fair share of stunt work and it's nice when I get to do it myself and, and you get out of it knowing you haven't, you know, hurt yourself and you can right. film in and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a nice thrill to add to the mix of things. You also worked with Tom Sizemore, who, of course, we just lost just a couple of days ago. Um, wh what was he like? A larger than life character and so many different levels and, and just a great, regular, affable guy, huh? Yes, he 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 was always very kind. He's a class act. He he uh, he enjoyed his work and he enjoyed uh, like being supportive with his fellow castmates and team. It, it, it was an inspiring thing. It was really, it's really, really sad how this can just, this kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. It just blindsided us. And uh, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's really sad. He's a great guy. And I, you just never know. You never know when it's going to happen. And uh, he was always really cool to work with and to hang with. He was really cool. I've done two movies with him and, uh, class act and he he's always been a great great actor um that i really respect and to meet him in person and for him to be as cool as he always has been really sealed the deal on you know this is inspiring uh people can go a very long way and they can just be cool and enjoy it um 
I hope his legend lives on as an inspiration for so many. Exactly. Beautifully said and so true. And you're sort of setting that tone through your work and the way that you're conducting yourself. Yeah. Um, one, one, you know, you get passionate about one thing and you're constantly working on this level of trust with someone in a directly um, uh, a position that you're working directly with. Yeah. You want to understand what shoes they're in in full and and to be able to step into those shoes is a blessing to be given the opportunity and then um to give it your all and uh just experience it and do make the most of it one thing at a time of course but it, it helps to broaden your perspective it helps to give you a fuller scope on on any shoes you step into whether it be actor mm -hmm. producer director one begets the other in the form of a greater understanding and greater perspective to it and you're able to actually perform better um in another at least in my experience because i can see it from all angles i, I see the common goal and i i can step from all angles and and uh understand it better so it kind of has its way of eliminating the things that you would otherwise worry about that don't matter and then it brings light to things that you might not have thought about that you should. Right, exactly. How much uh, is the character you play you? Are there elements of you? You know, they say every time that, you know, you do uh, a role, anybody does a role, there's always, you sprinkle in little essences of who you are as a person a little bit into that character, which gives it the little juice, the extra spice to it. Uh, how much of the character would you say is you and how much are you that character? Um, it, I guess it depends on the character. Uh, I do like to feel like I'm giving myself this, this uh, I guess the best way to put it or a simple way to put it is hitting the expedite button on life experience. So I do use the emotional recall and I do use my own experiences and and relationships and people that I know in my life and I love or what, however, feel different ways about different people as we all do. Yeah. But I also enjoy imagining new circumstances, um, kind of like interweaving new imagine like uh, imagined circumstances that help me to experience life while I'm experiencing a role, while I'm carrying out a story. Um, it's nice to be able to absorb it. Um, while you, you can use emotional recall, you can use the people that you know, but nonetheless, it's still a new experience that your your heart is actually absorbing and you're actually growing from. So that's where it's really gratifying as well. It's cathartic on one hand and it's gratifying on another with a new experience. Catharsis helps you to process feelings that are just kind of just there and sometimes stagnant. Sometimes you haven't given love or light to um, so it's nice to put that into your work. And that is that is amazing in itself. And then to also imagine uh, a new experience altogether, it's hitting the expedite button on life experience. And it's something I will always appreciate about this craft. On many levels. Absolutely. Uh, you also were in this just in. Tell us about that one. How'd that come along for you? That was that was a great time. It was it was fun. It was like a it was like a it was a high school teen sitcom kind of a thing. It was a lot of fun. Uh, filmed at Associated Associated Television Studios. That was a lot of fun. It was, everyone in the cast was amazing to work with. Um, the whole team behind the scenes, talented, fun time, fun time. Uh, playing Tyler, he was like uh, it was it was uh, it was fun to be kind of campy and. Uh, I think with his character, with this, the uh, funniest thing is when he would he would kind of come and introduce a whole new thought, a whole new perspective on life itself and how he would see things, which you wouldn't expect out of a jock because mm. the joke is he's a jock, the character, but he's more like a hippie guru uh, when you get to know him and and he comes in <laughs> out of left field a lot with, but, but he really passionately means what he's saying. So 
so it's it's funny because you feel the weight of how much he means it. So that that was a lot of fun to just commit to that and really mean what he's saying. And what he was saying often was very altruistic, which I hope right. to extend to all the viewers and help them to think about altruism generally. So it, it was also like a well-rounded full circle of like, oh, this is <laughs> it's amazing character to, to get really deeply into. Have fun and with it. You got the Emmy nomination uh, as well for your comedic work as an actor uh, in that. Do you like the comedy as much as you, I mean, you're really, you nail it with the drama, but do you also like those opportunities when you can be comedic? Yeah, it's, it's fun. I am very grateful for the Emmy nomination. That was not expected. Um, Pop TV's first Emmy nomination for the show and then an actor nomination for, for me playing my character. That was like, I didn't expect that. I'm very grateful. And um, I do enjoy the comedy. And even in dramatic roles, I enjoy the comedic moments, which serve the drama feeling more authenticated in a sense, where if you can have scenes where you're just having a laugh, you're having a, you know, you're just chilling, you, uh, you, sh you, 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 uh, you show that side of the character, but you also just embrace that vibe. Uh, that, so when things really like shit, it's the fan, uh, things get really tragic or something. Um, you're, you're the, there's a huge contrast from the lightheartedness to then the heavy, as opposed to if it's always just heavy the whole time, it's kind of one note. It's not, it's not going to have as much of a, um, impact. So it's, it's nice to enjoy. I always like a role that's dramatic. If they have like nice comedic little moments there, it, it helps serve how tragic the drama is in the story as well helps pull the heartstrings of the viewer, including yourself as an actor, because you're kind of in it together. So I do appreciate the layers of comedy that'll be in a dramatic role and vice versa. I, I, comedy is fun. Um, I've done more drama, that's for sure. But nonetheless, I love when when there's layers of comedy in there to complement everything. Absolutely. You also played the lead role in A Place Called Hollywood, a satire that tells the cutting edge story of a young man who pursues his dream of becoming a famous actor and gives a glimpse of the harsher side of Hollywood. What was it like being uh, the lead in that one? That was that was a lot to commit to because there, there's actually, speaking of tragedy, yeah, most definitely there's a, a tragedy in that. Uh, it was a lot to connect to. Um, but it's all for the honor of, you know, what we're doing here and doing this craft. It, it's like you, you have a you just have to decide whether you're going to it's either you fully commit and give your all or you just absolutely don't. And everything can backfire, possibly. So it's like a, and then and then without feeling a load of pressure about committing, I like to find a way to enjoy the fact that I'm committing because I'm going to learn my heart's going to be broken and then repaired. I'm going to come out stronger. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to have an experience that's made up, but the heart doesn't always really know the difference. If you're really committed, you can kind of become stronger anyway from that experience as an actor. It all exactly. becomes a memory. Yeah, it's a memory. It's something that still broke your heart and then you patched it back up and you got stronger from it anyway. It's an opportunity uh, as an actor. You can, you can, you have the opportunity to become stronger even through imagined circumstances and there's definitely there's definitely a strong amount of that in that movie if I yeah with each role that you take as an actor and each role you take as a producer and director it sort of builds you know your character sort of enhances uh who you are because you you sort of see these different perspectives on life and um, they become part of you and then you sort of express it through your uh, future work we all do in living the life experience. How do you, you know, when you're taking on a role that's really, sometimes I'll ask a guest if they, especially if they're an actor or an actress, you know, even if they're a Broadway star, sometimes the role can be really intense. And sometimes you hear people say, gee, it's so intense that even when I go home, I'm still living that character and it's tough to separate that character from who 
you know, in Christos is in this case, how do you, what do you do to find the balance and to be able to separate from the character that you are living almost every day and still maintain the essence of who you are as a person? Yeah. Very, very good question. It's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you have a unwinding process, uh, remembering normal life, you know, reality, of course, uh, and, uh, kind of slowly letting go of, uh, this whole imagined life slash kind of putting in a lot of heart and emotional recall. And oftentimes a role will require you getting more into the reality of that role's reality than real life calls for. So it's like, uh, it could even be up to, I'd say just offhand, like fivefold what reality calls for emotionally a role will call for, you know, fivefold, tenfold, depending obviously how intense the role is, but I will definitely get very much my focus at heart will go into a role's reality um, to the point that reality itself is like, ah, you know, just phoning it in kind of feeling. And uh, you kind of have to have a downtime, a little bit of, you know, R&R afterwards and find your appreciation for reality again. Yeah. Remember, oh, yeah, this is exactly who I am. This is my circumstance in life. I can let go. You know, it's almost like uh, mourning the death of your character each time. Yeah. To, like just slowly but surely let it go. But. Nonetheless, you can kind of bring those lessons with you, which is nice. Like you, you will learn lessons through the role, which you can then differentiate from obviously reality, but bring it into your life nonetheless to make you more of an experienced person. Um, yeah. I'm really grateful that I had been in environments that supported the mental fortitude it takes to really commit to a role and, and really uh, just give it your all and, and come out like, in decent shape on the other end and uh know that you honored it so that i'm really grateful about this whole process that's been ongoing you know the uh and then when you are it's always great to get the love of the fans the viewers the the ticket buyers of course that that makes it all happen but when you get the acknowledgement of the industry of the peers um who who know what it takes the blood sweat and tears to do the things that, you know, we all do in these, these crazy industries we're in, but beloved yeah. industries, it's something special. And you have been, you know, rewarded and awarded multiple times at a very early age for your work as an actor, producer, director, uh, Emmy after Emmy after Emmy. When, when you got the very first one, uh, what was that like for you uh it was an acknowledgement obviously of your work job well done and then of course more came your way and continued to but when you got that first one what was that feeling like for you christos it had to be something pretty special oh yeah oh yeah 100 percent surreal very very surreal like did they really just they really just called my name um uh, and then you're just overwhelmed by this overwhelming feeling by of 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 gratitude um of bliss of like fulfillment and uh encouragement of what you've been doing and how much how, but but you're a lot of <laughs> a lot of you is completely shocked um and you have to kind of rise to the occasion and accept it and it, it was just amazing and the sweetest part of the first time for me was the fact that my mom was there she got to witness that firsthand um because she always encouraged it and yeah. she was supportive of this journey um it, it, it's something i took on myself and i you know i made it my own choice and she wasn't very involved other than the firsthand and encouraging it um but she it was so nice that she was there um at that ceremony at the emmys when i won the first Emmy for lead actor and I was able to shout, give her a shout out right in front of me, right there. It, it was touching because God bless her. We, I lost her um, five going on six years ago, but she, uh, 
she was there for that first time. I'm so thankful to God that she was able to witness the progress, the success for what she had always hoped. Isn't that the beautiful part that she was able to see some of these coming to fruition and early on she believed in you and she she gave you sort of the wings to fly and then let you fly and then there to to support it and and love it and relish in, in it and tell the other relatives and neighbors that's my son there's nothing like that uh that love and that support and she's she's still with you through everything and she'll always be with you Krista. she will always be there she'll Thank always be you know on your shoulder um, congratulating and loving your sisters in the Bay as well. Right. Celeste. Yeah. She's awesome. She's like a life partner. We've, uh, obviously we grew up together, but it's so nice to be doing the same, you know, heart's passion together. Um, yeah, she's on the Bay. She does a great job. I'm really proud of her. Um, I'm really just, so it's, it's such a deep, feeling of uh gratification to, when you have family in it as well you feel a really nice sense of company really nice uh sense of uh warmth i i suppose and and it's also nice because that same feeling extends to the rest of the cast and the, the team on the bay we have like this nice support each other warmly uh we put our all into it our passion and we support each other like family kind of a feeling, which uh, churns out the uh, special work that that you see on this show. I'm uh, definitely really grateful for that. What is it like? Yeah. Working with the cast and, uh, you know, the other really talented people. And then, of course, all the extraordinary guest stars that come in and other talent that come through who've been on soap operas and a lot of other epic television series and so much more. And they come through the Bay as well. Um, what is that like working, you know, with all of them too? It's such a pleasure and it's an honor. Um, yeah. We've got legends on this show that, yeah. I'm so, you know, fortunate to be working with directly and uh, standing alongside as we go. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an honor, definitely. And uh, the most inspiring thing is how they're kind and they, um, they truly appreciate the content they're doing, the material they've got. They don't carry this feeling of like um, there's nothing that's, that feels pretentious or, or presumptuous. Uh, they're just down to earth. I, maybe we've gotten lucky or maybe the, it's a combination of that and the environment of the show and how everyone comes together. Everyone puts their heart into it. Everyone's passionate. Everyone, it's a, it's a labor of love. This, this show, it's uh, based on the, the uh, material and the passion and the contents of the heart uh, more than anything. I don't think anyone has this feeling they need to behave any certain way other than just authentically and kindly and to put their heart into the work. So that's the most inspiring thing to me about them. And you're working with epic people, you know, who've created the series, the writers, the other producers, directors, uh, you know, it takes a village to put these kinds of series on and here we go. Here's another season and everybody loves it. And you know, the ratings are good and it's got a real deep, you know, loyal fan base and that's cool stuff too. Right. Oh yeah. Super cool. I'm very thankful for, for uh, all of our fans and uh, our supporters, our peers. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it's, you just put your all into something yeah. and you, you know, you got to keep putting the effort in and it definitely takes a village, everyone together. Yeah. It's a grind. It's, it's uh, but if you're going to grind on something, it might as well be something you love. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yes. I want to let people know quick too, that uh, there's a couple other things that they should be on the lookout from you. Chris stars playing opposite Tony Todd in the Edgar Allan Poe classic retelling of the Raven written and directed by create creator and showrunner of the Bay, Gregory J. Martin with the anticipated uh, fall of this year release. And then also playing a lead in the dark comedy on Apple TV, 
called Murder and Anyone, one of the highest rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes this year uh, from the same director of Survive the Game, James Cullen Presseg. What, what's that like on those two fantastic projects back to back there, huh? Yeah, that was fun. Uh, wow. On Murder Anyone, uh, James directing, he's the same director as the movie I did with Bruce Willis and uh he, it was really an honor to be invited because this particular movie, Murder Anyone, was uh, honored to his dad, his late father who passed away. He, he had a play and the play, um, it's got so many dimensions to it. And he took that and made it into a movie on the silver screen. And that added even another layer or a few of dimensions to it. And it's it's a comedy, a horror a thriller, the, the genre changes throughout the movie, like Bohemian Rhapsody changes throughout the song. Right. Like, what a trip. It was a lot to, to like for each of us to pull off as the genres shifted. My character changed, the accent changed, the, the intentions changed, the genre of the movie went from action to horror to comedy to this British uh, Knives Out vibes on this other. It was like a whole collection of everything that was a lot of fun though and i'm really grateful that james invited me to come you know do that that role as cooper like going all the way through the movie leading a story through it was it was a huge honor and a pleasure a great time everyone was so great to work with and then as far as the raven uh working with tony todd was such a pleasure uh gregory did such a good job expanding this poem the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, mm. legendary, obviously, uh, writer. Um, but it's always just been like this poem that everyone knows, The Raven. And it, of course, his other work, but often just, you know, it's short. It's not. So he took a few poems, The Raven, Lenore, Annabelle Lee, um, and managed to make this beautiful expansion of Edgar Allan Poe's thoughts put into one story. And uh, it, it, it helped to actually serve this poem we all know, The Raven. It helped to serve why, why this character is actually losing his sanity, uh, speaking slash yelling at this bird. Um, what is this? What's the root connection to this? What is this all about? So the movie The Raven explains that and it takes you through this like tragic, heart wrenching yet beautiful story. It's a really nice piece. I'm really excited for everyone to see. That's incredible. We'll keep an eye out for it. I want to let people know too on social media at Christos. That's where you can find uh, our special guest here. Why do you love doing this? I mean, you, you, your heart and soul is in everything you do from the acting, producing, directing. Again, the, the industry has paid heed. The fans love it. But why does Christos love it? What, do, what does it do for you? What does it bring to the table for you to be able to express yourself through entertainment, through the arts, through what you do and do so well, my friend? Well, I think uh, it all is an attribute to the art of being human. It's it's taking this, you know, we, we live in reality where we're, you know, uh, taught to suppress... Um, all of the spectrum of feelings and, oh, just get to work, do your job, don't trip out, don't have actual feelings, don't, uh, you know, don't be hurt when you're, you're feeling hurt, don't, it, it's, uh, when you're doing film and television, you're embracing what it means to be human, all of the uh, reading between the lines that in society we're supposed to just you know be strong whatever and it's fine it's great but there's such a gratification that comes with embracing everything in between like going through heartbreak and being celebrated for it rather than oh you know you get a little you get support of course from people your loved ones god bless all, all families and the best friends that are there for you but nonetheless it's not something that's necessarily celebrated because you're feeling human feelings, but when you're doing film and television, it is. So you have this, this sort of safe territory where you can just let it all, like you just feel is more human than you'd feel in real life. So to like arguably, 
Um, and you actually gain so much wisdom at heart subconsciously, but at heart and, and just direct through direct experience, through the experiences you're having, the stories you're telling, it's really a sweet thing. It's really nice to celebrate human life and human mm -hmm. feeling and the art of actually just existing as a human being. That's where it's most gratifying for me. Art helps to, yeah. to, to honor what it means to just be a soul that's going through this thing we call life and actually being embraced for being as real as possible. Absolutely. So beautifully said, I tell you, so succinctly said. Uh, before we go, you used to summer in the UK. Do you still get a chance to go back to uh, to do that? Yeah, I do. I, as often as I can, at least. I, 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 I spent every summertime uh, growing up. I'd be at Ridge Farm, which, mm -hmm. uh, which interesting enough, I was just uh, earlier today, uh, someone was talking to me about it, but um, the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, they, they go to this uh, farm recording studio, and it's actually where Bohemian Rhapsody, the song, was written. It's uh, at Ridge Farm, which was known as Ridge Farm Studios in surrey england that's where i actually spent every summer time growing up because my that's my uncle's place used to be my grandma's place and my mom would bring me there every summer and uh i just i spent my my summer times there growing up i'm really proud of the family though they had a uh, so many rock stars in and out of that place so much history there so much rocks british rock star history very proud very proud of that and uh yeah, yeah that's that's uh yeah, that's where I'd be, Rich Farm. And uh, I go back, you know, I go, I try to at least make it once a year. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to be in London. And then I love the countryside, though, Surrey, especially yeah. it's lush um, yeah. in the warmer months. It's really, it's really nice. The Masters family on my father's side, his father's side, I'm like the fifth James, goes back to Yorkshire. And that's beautiful up through there, too. Uh, nice. The countryside of Yorkshire. Really, really nice. Yeah, so that's great. You get a chance to to be able to do that. Um, you got a lot going on. This is really amazing, my friend. I really appreciate, you know, with the busyness of your career and your day-to-day -day, that you took time to spend time with us and all the viewers. They've been commenting. They've been saying hello. They already called you a Gym Master Show lovety, which is kind of cool, huh? Wow. <laughs> I tell you, you get yeah. all the, you can get the Emmys, the Oscars, the Tonys, the Peabody's, the Tellies, the Grammys. But when you get told by the viewers, you're a, a lovety on the Gym Master Show live, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's, that's an honor. Thank yeah, you. Most, most guests say their feet start tingling. One of the guests said that he started levitating as a result. <laughs> we, that's it. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I'll have, to, be, I'll have to try that sometime. Really focus on it. Just, yeah, focus. Amazing. Use that uh, X Games background, and somehow I think you will rise to the occasion and levitate. <laughs> You're the best, and uh, congratulations on everything. Again, uh, folks, uh, for folks who are now, you know, wanting to know even more about the Bay, maybe they were not followers, but now because of this conversation, they are. Where can they see the series? Um, so, the Bay is on Peacock, and right. now Tubi as well. Tubi, um, yeah, yeah, and then at Amazon. But yeah, those. If you have either of those, yeah. Uh, definitely check it yeah. out um, yeah, we have both and it's great awesome yeah and then the handle is the bay the series on uh instagram twitter that's the handle for it on social media and then of course that's chris stars there um really cool i really appreciate all of this um conversation and this time my friend and we're going to keep the porch light on for you you're welcome back Anytime, I hope you spread the word about the Gym Master Show Life series. Like I said, it's sort of, you know, uh, using my TV and reader background, it's sort of an old school, like uh, Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson conversation versus the typical 
interview uh, with the viewers commenting and the viewers watching around the world and nothing too crazy. Kathleen in New York City says, thanks for being here, Christos. Good luck with all that you do. Maureen watching in Arizona. You are an, indeed an amazing young man, Christos. You've certainly accomplished a lot. May your future be bright. Sherry Larson in Kansas, USA. Thank you for being here tonight, Christos. Congratulations on all you've accomplished and best wishes for all that is to come. Really nice. Thank Christine you. Clifton, North Carolina. Thanks, Jim, for this inspirational show. I enjoyed learning more of Christos' career. He's so multi-talented, grounded, and hardworking. So impressed with his success, awards for his work, and best wishes. She is in yes. North Carolina. Merlin up wow. in uh, Ontario. Thank you, Christos, for being here with us. You are a truly talented young man. And that's just a few from uh, our lovely viewing audience from around the world. Not not too shabby, huh? <laughs> no, no, not too shabby at all. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Yeah. That, and it's seriously, anytime that's you need a lift, just pop by, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, it's, that's perfect. Uh, Take, That's take your on it. I'll just feel like, hey Jim, I'm feeling like I, I could use a lift right now. So uh, yeah. let me let me come That's on it. right. Let me pop on. I got a few things to share. I'm in this and this and yeah. Well, you got it. They shared. I I really appreciate it, you guys. And Absolutely. Well, we definitely need it. It's kind of the vibe we got here. Um, thanks, my friend. Uh, really appreciate this conversation and best of luck with everything. Let's stay in touch. You are definitely welcome back. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you. Absolutely have. And I really appreciate you having me on, Jim. Thank you. You're very welcome. Congratulations on everything. And we'll look for more from you, Christos. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Really means well. well. You'd be well. Very welcome. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you on the next one. Love you all. Take care and be well. Cheers.